Good morning and welcome to Korea Today, live from Seoul. North Korea marks the second anniversary of the death of the former leader Kim Jong-il. Today, all eyes are on who will stand on the sides of Kim Jong-un now that his longtime right-hand man has been executed. And President Park Geun-hye says South Korea should be prepared for possible provocations from North Korea. More coming up in the headlines. And a committee has a nominee for the next chief of the Korea's uh, telecom company, KT. We'll have the details on in print. Focusing on innovative and future-oriented growth is the main goal for Korea's creative economy. How has the country come so far with its policy? I have more on that coming up. Acid snow is as natural as acid rain in our post-industrial revolution world and poses an unusual threat. Acid snow has become an issue in the present day. Get a look at just what this is. An intraocular pressure may not ring a bell, but it is the leading cause of glaucoma. It isn't limited to the elderly, and glaucoma leads to blindness if not treated. We look at preventative measures on Tuesday, December 17, 2013. From Arirang News... This is Korea Today. And good to have you with us on Korea Today on this Tuesday morning. We have some buzzing statistics at the top of the hour. That's right. It is the end of the year and time for those year-end parties. And according to analyses by the Seoul Institute and the Statistics Korea last year, 60% of Seoul citizens drank alcoholic beverages at least once a month. Now, that doesn't really sound like much, but 26% of Seoulites drank up to twice a week, while 11% drank up to four times a week. And get this, 5% almost 5% drank up to every single day of the week. So That's that is a lot. five out of every 100 people. Exactly. That's quite a lot. Now, as for the reasons they can't quit drinking, 63% of them said because of their social life, because they need to socialize not just with their friends, but with their colleagues and bosses. And uh, another 33% said it was due to stress. Mm -hmm. And the year's almost out. And I know a lot of people are holding year-end parties and gatherings, but try to go easy on drinking. Go easy and drink responsibly. <laughs> All right, we'll begin Korea today now with a check of the day's headlines with Nai Hang Kyung. And we start with North Korea. Pyongyang's military has vowed loyalty to its young leader Kim Jong-un. A day before the two-year anniversary of the death of the young leader's father and former leader Kim Jong-il, a major gathering of military personnel took place on Monday at the Kumsusan Memorial Palace in Pyongyang. With sincere belief and will, we hereby solemnly swear to serve the leader as the center of unity and one and only supreme commander. And on this Tuesday, a nationwide ceremony commemorating Kim Jong-il's death is expected to take place in North Korea. Analysts say the positioning of key officials at the ceremony will offer a hint at the regime's new power structure following last week's execution of Pyongyang's longtime second-in-command, Chang song tae Meanwhile, in a phone conversation Monday, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi discussed North Korea issues for the first time since Chang's execution. The two reportedly discussed how to resume the stalled six-party talks aimed at denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula. And President Park Geun-hye says given the current situation in North Korea, Seoul should not rule out the possibility of Pyongyang engaging in quote-unquote reckless provocations. Her remarks uh, come during a meeting with senior foreign affairs and security officials on Monday. The president says South Korea should be fully prepared for possible hostilities from across the border. The president has ordered to come up with measures that will reinforce the operation of the National Security Council as well as the function of the National Security Office, including establishing a permanent NSC secretariat. And in New York, Monday local time, UN Secretary General and former South Korean Foreign Minister Pan Ki-moon urged North Korea's neighboring countries not to take any quote-unquote premature actions. This is the UN chief's first public comments about Chang sung taeks ouster. While calling the execution dramatic and surprising, Pan also urged Pyongyang's leadership to work on denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula. 
Arrest warrants for 10 executive members of the nation's railway union have been issued. This comes amid the ongoing union's strike, which, be which began last week against what they call the government's move to privatize the state-run railway operator, Corail. The Labor Ministry, as well as the prosecution and police, are calling the strike illegal. The government says the union's claim is groundless, adding its decision to form a subsidiary company to manage some new KTX routes will not lead to privatizing Corail. And with the lack of trained personnel working on site due to the walkout, a series of safety accidents continue to occur, including one that killed an 84-year-old passenger on Sunday. Commuters who were mostly unaffected by the strike so far will likely start to feel the impact with operation of KTX lines scheduled to be reduced starting today and the union members of the Seoul Metro Line No. 124 scheduled to join the strike starting Wednesday. The chairman of debt-ridden Dongyang Group, Hyun Jae-hyun, was grilled by prosecutors on Monday. He is said to be resting now, but will be asked to return to the prosecutor's office and answer more questions on Tuesday. Hyun is accused of issuing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of commercial papers to investors, even when he knew his company was unable to pay back its debts. Some 50,000 investors are said to have been affected by the group's default, and before entering the process, the prosecutor's office, Hyun said he would do everything in his power to minimize the investor's losses. However, he reportedly denied the charges against him during the questioning session, saying he only issued the papers because he thought the firm would be able to pay back the debts. And good morning, everyone. Time for a look through your newspaper headlines. We'll go ahead and begin with the front page of Tonga Ilbo this morning. As you can see, it has an image of North Korea's massive loyalty ceremony that was headed by Vice Marshal Che Ryong Hae. Now, meanwhile, Tonga Ilbo's big headline above brings us back to South Korea, and it reads National Security Council Permanent Secretariat to be pursued to counter security threat. This a result of President Park Geun Hye's meeting of. Her her top security officials yesterday, during which she emphasized that the possibility of provocations from North Korea cannot be excluded. She called for the revival of the secretariat that had served as a control tower on security issues under the Nomuhyun administration. Let's go ahead and scoot on over to Chungang Ilbo next. It also has a similar front page story or image uh, pictorial story there. We'll go ahead and take a look at the side story here. The headline reads, First Passenger Death Amidst Railway Workers Strike, University Student with Three Days Training Conductor. This is a story that shook a lot of heads yesterday. An 84-year-old elderly woman was killed when part of her body got stuck in the subway door and the train left. The conductor or crew member charged with opening and closing the electronic doors was a substitute for the striking union railway workers and a 19-year-old student who had received three days of safety training in line with regulations according to the article. Corail is reported reported to have brought in 238 such students as relief workers, but the university decided to pull all of them out after yesterday's accident. Mm. And if this situation seems to be getting out of hand, now we're relying on university students to run the show. And this strike will expand to subway unions starting tomorrow if there's no breakthrough today. That's right, and that is causing a lot of people to uh, be very concerned getting onto those subways. Lines for one through four are jointly uh, run with uh, or by Corail, which is why we're already seeing these relief workers being brought in. But should it be expanded to the subway union, then certainly we could see even less, um, I guess, uh, trains throughout mm -hmm. the day, given uh, safety precautions, given this accident as well. 
All right, let's go ahead and move on to Kyungyang Shimun's front page. It has a headline uh, as a, with an update on its story from yesterday. The headline reads, Are You All Well? Resounding echo in Korean society. Adding there that the Are You All Well? handwritten poster campaign that began with one Korean university student a week ago has not only expanded to other universities, but is now participated by high school students and the general public as well as similar pen to paper displays of societal concerns are being found in apartment and neighborhood walls. Now we'll leave that story there and scoot on over to Joseon Ilpo. We'll turn our eyes to the bottom article on the front page there. Uh, the headline reads, Carrie Wong discuss North Korea's situation in phone call and what you're seeing there is a file uh, image of Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry from uh, September. Now, not a lot has been disclosed as to what was said during that Sunday phone call, other than that the two key diplomats discussed North Korea and its unfolding changes on the sidelines of discussing the situation in Syria. Though Foreign Minister Wang uh, is reportedly told the press separately that an important change is occurring in Pyongyang and that Beijing is watching it closely, while Secretary Secretary of State John Kerry told the U.S. broadcaster that Chang Sung Tech's recent execution shows how ruthless and reckless and how insecure Kim Jong Un's regime is in his eyes. All right, let's go ahead and wrap things up with a look at our business daily for today. Korea Economic Daily's headline reads, Former Samsung Electronics President Hwang chang yu tapped as KT's new chairman. A committee arrived at the nomination on Monday calling Hwang an innovative manager, and the 60-year-old had led Samsung's semiconductor business division through the year 2008. During his earlier career at the electronics giant had led the development of the world's first first 256 megabyte DRAM in 1994. Now, if confirmed in a shareholders meeting in January, he will serve through the year 2017 as chief of KT. And with that, we'll wrap your look at what's in print on this Tuesday. Next up are your closing numbers from Monday's Market Action. Before we get a check on today's weather conditions, weather officials said yesterday that it's not going to be a white Christmas no. this Christmas. Aww, us know. ladies are bummed out a little uh, well, bit. I'm bummed out as well. <laughs> Darn it, I, we can hope for some snow though. We'll just have to wait and see. It's next week, right? Miracles do happen. All right. right. For a check on today's <laughs> weather though, we'll go over to Idami. Good morning, Idami. Good morning to you, Idami. Looking like a squirrel, may I say. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Today I'm reporting live from Gangnam Gu Tower. Yes, I am bundled up from head to toe. It is, it is still a bit cold outside. Now, here in the central regions, we are starting off with partly cloudy skies. Uh, temperatures are slightly warmer than yesterday. Right now, it is negative 5 degrees Celsius. But like I said, make sure to bundle yourselves up on your morning commutes. Now, here in the central regions, we will be seeing clear conditions throughout the day. However, story is a bit different over in Gangwon-do as the mountainous area will be receiving the most snow of the season so far with over 25 centimeters of snow piling up. Also uh, down in the mountainous areas of Jeju Island as well there will be quite some uh, quite a bit of snow falling as well. Now uh, our temperatures did rise back up to the average seasonal temperatures yesterday in the afternoon. However the cold snap is bound to return the day after tomorrow along with sharp and gusty winds so we'll have to prepare ourselves once again. Okay let's now go ahead and take a look at the weather around the peninsula. Seoul's highs will reach up to 4, Taejeon and Daegu at 5, Gwangju at 6, Busan and Jeju at 9 degrees. That's all I have for the weather forecast. I'll be back to introduce to you a special way of touring the Gangnam District. December 17th. 
2011, with the sudden death of North Korea's leader Kim Jong-il. His son Kim Jong-un, 28 years old at the time, succeeded him to take power. Kim Jong-un is the second son born from Ko Young-hee, Kim Jong-il's third wife, and seized the reins of power, superseding the first son Kim Jong-nam to be named the supreme commander of North Korea's armed forces. Kim Jong-il's younger sister, Kim Kyung-hee, and her husband, Chang sung tae took on the role of mentoring the young leader, assisting in the power succession. And with this support, despite being only in his 20s and lacking experience, Kim Jong-un was able to take on the titles head of the ruling Workers' Party and the first chairman of the National Defense Commission, becoming the head of state. For the past two years, the young Kim has replaced over 100 officials in key posts in the party and military, focusing on solidifying his grip on power. One of the notable moves he made was pushing out elder military officials from his father's era and instead carrying out frequent reshuffles, appointing younger members to key posts. As a result of these actions, much effort went into building up his own forces within the military and establishing a new power base. And through this process, he was able to secure his position as the country's top leader in the party, government and military. On the domestic front, Kim Jong-un focused on securing his power, but he showed both hot and cold approaches toward the outside world. Last April, the North carried out a long-range rocket launch, and in February of this year, it conducted its third nuclear test, followed by the unilateral shutdown of the inter-Korean Kaesong Industrial Complex, further raising tensions in the region. However, more recently, Pyongyang has showed flexibility in its attitude, offering talks with Seoul and Washington. Also on the economic front, Kim Jong-un has pushed forward with his dual nuclear and economic development policy line, boosting the importance of economic development. In order to do so, the North has moved forward with slow and cautious reform measures, inviting in foreign capital and developing special economic zones. Kim Jong-un is believed to have solidified his leadership within two years of his rule, and at this juncture, many people are looking to see how this will affect inter-Korean relations, as well as the overall dynamic in East Asia. And we have Dr. Pung Young-sik from the Asan Institute for Policy Studies to talk more about North Korea and its leader, Kim Jong-un. Now, Dr. Pong, it's only been two years, but Kim Jong-un has already replaced many key officials from his father's regime with younger personnel. Would it be a fair statement to say that he has solidified his leadership? Yes, so according to the South Korean government statistics, at least 44% of key positions in the uh, North Korean military and uh, government uh, has it been replaced by new members? Mm -hmm. So uh, this is Kim Jong-un's country in every sense, especially with the oust of the, uh, his uncle, uh, Jang sung Tak. Um, but um, despite all the uh, dramas and uh, shocking theatrics of the dismissal of Jang sung Tak, uh, this is not the first time in the history of North Korean politics that uh, there has been a brutal uh, purge mm -hmm. uh, in the government. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that Kim Jong-un uh, took the uh, same steps that uh, his uh, grandfather took in 1950s when the great leader Kim Il-sung purged uh, his rivals uh, like Mr. Park Geun-young and the uh, pro-Chinese factions. Mm -hmm. What do you think contributed maybe the most to him solidifying his power then? Was it his recruitment strategy or is it boosting the economy, putting a lot of emphasis on boosting economy? As the initial report of this segment uh, well explained that uh, the succession process was rather abrupt and fast mm -hmm. uh, because of the sudden uh, deterioration of health of Kim Jong-il in uh, 2011. Uh, but it has been also very uh, systematic and smooth. I believe that uh, Kim Jong-il took care of the succession process uh, before his physical death um, today, two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Kim Jong-un uh, assumed all three uh, key positions in the government right. even before the death of his father. And um, we can um, just uh, uh, take a guess that the oust of uh, Chang sung tae might have been part of the grand scheme orchestrated and instructed by uh, his father Kim Jong-il before his death. 
like pitting one faction against the other as a long process of solidifying uh, Kim Jong-un's power as an absolute leader. Mm -hmm. uh, first, he joined hands with Chang Song tae and controlled the military. And now he ousted Chang Song tae and solidified his you know, absolute position in the government. Mm -hmm. So how would you say Kim Jong-un differs from his father, uh, Kim Jong-il, in the succession of power? Some say that he seems a bit rash and rushed for mm -hmm. that matter. Well, some people would say that uh, uh, like father, like son, uh, they saw a lot of similarities between uh, Kim Jong-il, uh, the father, and Kim Jong-un, the son. But um, I would say that uh, uh, um, um, not many sons can top uh, their fathers. Hmm. Um, last week, we celebrated my father's 80th birthday. Uh, happy birthday again, Dad. Uh, so <laughs> I, I have to say something nice to him. Yes. That Kim Jong-un doesn't seem to be as a qualified leader as his father, because he simply did not receive enough uh, uh, tutelage, a training process. Right, experience, lack right, of experience. Only two years. Uh, in contrast, uh, his father Kim Jong-un was anointed by great leader Kim Il-sung and carefully groomed for 20 years uh, until he assumed the top position in 1994. There's a struggle. Uh, great deal of difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And one uh, distinct difference that I see uh, between Kim Jong-il and Kim Jong-un is that uh, Kim Jong-il seems to be only a uh, pragmatic uh, leader uh, inside North Korea, according to the uh, secret report by the Kim Dae-jung government of South Korea. Mm -hmm. And the report also pointed out that Kim Jong-un uh, could uh, uh, make uh, good humor, jokes, to uh, many people. Uh, when uh, they, uh, Kim, Kim Jong-il kidnapped the other Korean, uh, South Korean director and the famous actress, um, he turned, invited them to the formal dinner and they, they turned, he turned to them and made a joke that, uh, commenting on his uh, physique, then, uh, what do you think of my uh, physique, that I'm small like uh, Mrs. Turt, aren't I? Hmm. So the fact that his father was comfortable making fun of himself that kind of relaxed posture is lacking in Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, some would still argue that we still have a little bit more time or more time for Kim Jong-un to show his personality. And some would argue that maybe Kim Jong-il had to fight off against uh, to secure his position when Kim Il-sung was still alive. So that, I think, needs to uh, be discussed a little bit more. But let's turn to the domestically in North Korea. Would you say from the average North Korean's point of view, did anything... Uh, change uh, from, the, uh, from the people of North Korea because, uh, I mean, after Kim mm -hmm. Jong-un took power, especially with the recent execution of Chang Song tae The uh, uh, recent execu execution of Chang Song tae uh, you know, uh, strengthened the uh, uh, perception uh, amongst the North Korean uh, citizens that it is a theocratic country ruled by the, uh, the members of the royal blood, the Baekdu royal blood, the right. Kim family. Uh, so, at least in the short term, there will be absolute <coughs> support for Kim Jong-un for a while, out of fear. Mm -hmm. And uh, turning to China and Washington, as well as South Korea for that matter, Chang song tae was known to have close diplomatic ties with China. And many are interested how and interested in where the North Korea-China relations are headed to. Do you, or do you uh, see a changing relationship maybe in, uh, between China and North Korea? I think uh, at least for a while, all the uh, related countries, including uh, United States, China, and South Korea, will focus on <coughs> keeping uh, Kim Jong-un calm and predictable uh, at, um, in order to avoid any uh, reckless behavior and uh, unwanted provocation waged by this leader. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, as you point, correctly pointed out, too early for outsiders to um, understand uh, what kind of leadership Kim Jong-un uh, really is. He could be a, a, just a, a very cruel a prince uh, living in the, his own wonderland without any good sense of uh, reality uh, with the outside world. So I think the related parties will uh, focus on earning more time to mm -hmm. come up with a joint effort to uh, deal with the uncertainties created by the uh, sudden a political purge inside North Korea. Mm -hmm. And lastly, what do you think is going through Kim Jong-un's mind when he is thinking about South Korea? 
It seems like uh, he's not really ready to engage in meaningful and pragmatic dialogues with South Korea. Mm -hmm. um, not just yet. Not just that. Um, uh, ready to accept uh, the merits of the trust politic proposed by the Park Geun-hye government. When you are busy inviting uh, Dennis Rodman to develop your basketball team <laughs> and building <coughs> very expensive uh, ski resort and the horse riding public parks, when there, the government has not really produced any uh, discernible um, you know, economic developmental plan uh, that will actually benefit the public. Mm -hmm. So he was, you were saying that he's focusing a little bit more on uh, what's going on in his regime rather than right. trying to deal right. with South Korea and trying to engage he's still, in uh, He's still focused on dialogue. getting quick boost for the legitimacy rather than long term. Uh, development of legitimacy. Okay, That's but, concerning. Right. As we mentioned, uh, we still have time to uh, see how North Korea's situation will unfold. Thank you very much, Dr. Pong young for joining us this morning and sharing your insight. Uh, thank you. 7.25 a.m. and still ahead on Korea Today, snow can act as a reservoir for acids in wintertime and store pollutants in the atmosphere. Next time you open your mouth to catch a taste of falling snow, you may get more than you bargained for. Find out more. Since President Park Geun-hye came into office earlier this year, building a creative economy has been one of the government's key policies. And recently, a large-scale exhibition was held where innovative and creative ideas could become reality and contribute to the economy. And our reporter Kim chan ju was there. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it was called Creative Korea 2013. It was jointly hosted by the Minister of Science, ICT and Future Planning, as well as Korea's major business associations. Uh, it was held for three days last week in Seoul and uh, showed many great, unique and creative ideas that reflected that creative economy. So I went out to find out how Korea is doing with realizing this goal. This little device is installed at the first spout of diesel car gas tanks. This prevents drivers from mistakenly pumping gasoline instead of diesel into their cars. The idea, which came from a father who was worried about his clumsy son, has now been transformed into a startup business product. My son bought a diesel car in February last year, and I have a gasoline car. If you pump gasoline into a diesel car by mistake, it can cost you anywhere from $5,000 to $150,000 to repair. It's a loss for the gas station, the insurance company and consumer. So that's why I developed this. From absorption floor boards that reduce interfloor noise, which has stirred up many problems in society, to safety signs that function like roly-poly toys to prevent secondary traffic accidents. Creative and unique ideas by people of all ages and gender came together here at one venue sponsored by the government to create business opportunities. A total of 45,000 visitors came to the event, heating up the atmosphere. My idea received good reviews, and with government support, it has become a business project, which is why I have submitted my work here. I've been displaying this for two days, and a lot of people have stopped by to ask questions, so that helps a lot. The Park geun administration introduced building a creative economy as one of its main policies, which aims to vitalize the various industries such as the manufacturing and service sector. For individuals, it is not easy to start up a business even with great ideas, so the government is providing support to help foster them. Israel is mostly consisted of desert land but managed to become a strong agriculture country thanks to efforts to build a creative economy. The country that boasts some 6,700 venture businesses is a role model for the Korean government's creative economy. It has now been almost a year since the government started its creative economy policy, and interest is growing outside of Korea as well.
It's really hard to say because you're right. Uh, you can you can you can say all the right things, and then you have to, to then you can put the pieces in place, but then you have to follow up over years sometimes. So how can I tell for sure what will happen? But if you don't take the steps that are being taken now, there's no chance it'll work. I think uh, Korea is trying yet again to transform itself under challenging conditions, but it has done so well in the past, I have little doubt that it will not succeed again. One of the IT companies participating at this exhibition drew attention with its product that received the Korea Creative Economy Award. Its outdoor waste bin uses solar energy to compress garbage down to one-fifth of its original volume, an environmentally friendly idea that drew much attention. In your house, you push down on your trash so that it doesn't overflow. But I was thinking it would be nice to do that for street garbage as well, especially on busy streets. That's how I began working on this product with my friends to build a garbage compression machine using energy. Ten young people joined hands in entrepreneurship. They had unique ideas and the technology, but they experienced difficult times in the early days due to the lack of experience. There were a lot of difficulties, but we're one of the companies that received a lot of support from the government. We went through a lot of trials and errors, but with that help, we were able to complete it like this. The Creative Town website was launched as part of the core operation to build a creative economy. Since it officially launched, roughly 3,800 ideas were submitted within the first two months. When you have an idea and want to patent it, we provide assistance with procedural aspects and also provide consultations on how to secure the funding to create a business model. Not all the ideas are put out as products, but you can receive help step by step. Entrepreneurs just starting out say it is helpful to be able to receive professional advice from experts in the startup industry. I was trying to think of which direction to go with my work, but coming here and listening to experts, I've gained a lot. I thought only people who are interested in opening their own business would be interested. But coming here made me realize many different people of different groups are here in order to fulfill their wishes and dreams. So that makes me want to work harder. Well, lots of prospective uh, inventions out there and mm -hmm. also startup companies over there. A lot of people were and some are still confused a little bit about the creative right. economy, but a year after its inception, mm -hmm. it seems that it is gaining a lot of momentum. And this is reflected towards or with the uh, number of participants in this exhibition. That's why within the three days of the exhibition, there are a total of 45,000 participants who gathered at the exhibition, which goes to show that there are so many people out there who are wishing to set up their own business uh, despite some of bad economic climate and um, uh, it was an interesting event that showed the potential for those who are wishing to succeed with their creative ideas regardless of their gender or age. Mm. And like you mentioned there are some concerns that the concept of a creative economy mm. is still ambiguous and That's elusive right. and some even doubt whether this is attainable. Mm -hmm. What was the general sentiment about this at the exhibition? Well first of all the government's intention uh, to dis is discover new ideas and to foster those for startups, but year has passed since then, and it looks like this initiative is gearing towards more towards to small startups or small and medium-sized enterprises. So at the event, some were skeptical as to what, how many jobs it will be able to create, but it is the fact that the government is giving very active support for uh, creative economy-related business. Mm. Um, in fact, we just saw on the report that President Pakone was there at the event, and she said that the government will set up the actual um, uh, creative economy towns um, along with the online website so that people People can actually um, share and cooperate to work on their creative ideas. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned government support that mm -hmm. actually will, active government support will help the creative economy, but uh, mm -hmm. the participants must have had some ideas on what other factors are needed mm -hmm. in order for the complete realization of the creative economy. That's right. Um, according to startup experts that I spoke to, it does take time for your new ideas and fresh ideas to uh, translate into science and for that science uh, to develop into technology and to finally reach 
reach commercialization. So uh, many pointed out that it is necessary to create this atmosphere where new ideas and small business can be treated well, um, rather than seeking for uh, short-term results. Mm. And it was interesting that um, one of the, uh, the speakers that were invited from the overseas said that Korea has the mind power and that's okay. going to set apart from the other countries to mm. succeed in creative economy. So mm. Sounds like the creative economy is taking shape. It's, it sounds like anything and everything could be part of mm -hmm. this creative economy idea. It's that's actually it. a lot simpler than one might imagine. Anything that's creative, as you said, right. can be a yeah. part of it. That's Chan right. Thank you, Chanju, for this Thank story. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's check back in with our Dami who joins us from a bus in Gangnam. That's right. It's a Gangnam-gu city or a tour bus, so we'll take a look at that. Dami, over to you. I'm back reporting live from Gangnam-gu, Seoul. Now, the end of the year is almost here, so many of you are probably making plans to go on vacation. Well, now you don't have to go that far to make it feel as if you're abroad. So uh, one thing about going on vacation uh, or going to a different country is that usually they have these uh, tour uh, shuttle buses. Well, here in Korea, in the district of Gangnam, they made the first ever uh, trolley bus, which is which was made from Korean technology. Now, right now, it is going through a trial run that is go uh, starting that started in December 12th, and it will go on until December 23rd. So, uh, well. First of all, I can see um, this automatic foothold. This way it makes it nice and easy for elders to get on the bus. Uh, it's the first to be applied on a city tour bus in Korea. Ah, now as we come inside. Um, so I want to go ahead and tell you a little bit more about uh, the map or how the buses run. There is a one hour interval for the buses that are operating, which starts from the Gangnam Tourist uh, Information Center. The trolley bus uh, passes through 21 designated stops, including Apujangdong, uh, Cheongnamdong, Bongunsa Temple, and more. Now, the entire journey takes about an hour and 40 minutes, but I really want to show you this really cool feature that you can find. It's this uh, tablet PC that's embedded into the seat, and uh, through a VOD system, you can find information about the stops and um, just about uh, Gangnam itself. It's, Provided in four different languages, Korean, English, Chinese, and Japanese. Let's go to the English one, and then I can find this map right here. And if we look right here, oh, here, you can find it. So can you hear the information there? Yes. So it's a great way for tourists to find and look up information about Gangnam and which uh, the stops that they're going to. Now as we move further into the back of the bus, it's just this nice spacious place where people can stand. But um, And as you can see, they already put up these Christmas decorations. I think it's lovely. Now the Gangnam trolley bus will start to run every day starting on December 24th. They are uh, from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. They are planning to uh, run the trolley every day throughout the, the center, um, throughout the year. Now you can buy tickets at the Gangnam Tourist Information Center at any stop and on the spot as well. So they do receive credit cards, also uh, cash, so in, uh, in all four different currencies as well. And uh, just looking out the window, they're so, they're humongous, so you can get a really nice view of the city itself. Um, why not go to their uh, website, find out more information, and check out the Gangnam Trolley Bus. That's all I have for now. I'm Idami, Korea Today. So they start on Christmas Eve. Mm. All right, another way to get a look at uh, Gangnam and all of its lovely districts, right? Mm. <laughs> all right, well, not long ago, we had some thick layers of smog coming from China, and following that was some heavy snow. Mm -hmm. So you got to wonder whether that beautiful white fluffy stuff is safe because some people actually taste the snow. Mm -hmm. That's right, <laughs> and you should not be doing that, right? Because apparently it is acid snow. Now, acid snow is the frozen counterpart of acid rain. It's precipitation polluted with sulfur as well as nitrogen oxides. That's uh, that comes from factories as well as power plants and smog. So next time you look at snow, there may be a little more than meets the eye. With the winter here, Korea has seen snow fall across the country. And when it starts snowing, you can easily see people walking around without an umbrella. But is this okay? According to the study from the Ministry of Environment, snow carried five times more nitrate and sulfate 
and three times more ammonia, all harmful to people's health compared to rain in the summer. Various substances that create acid snow, such as sulfate and nitrate, are found a lot. And not only that, the many different heavy metals that come from China and other pollutants are included in the acid snow. Last week, the acidity level in Seoul's snow was at pH 4.4, which is 15 times higher than the standard level and similar to that of orange juice. With the increase in heating during the winter season, the level of lead, cadmium, chrome, and other heavy metals was measured higher than in the summer. This meets with the water vapor in the air and turns into substances such as sulfuric acid. Even though they both contain acidic substances, acid snow requires more precaution than acid rain. Because snowflakes are larger in surface area, they fall at a slower speed and can more easily mix with the pollutants in the atmosphere. Because acid snow has highly corrosive substances within it, it's important to avoid coming in direct contact. Patients with eczema will experience worse symptoms as well as those with skin conditions. In severe cases, you can expect the loss of hair, and if acid snow gets into your nose, it can irritate your respiratory tract, exacerbating asthma, or causing more severe problems for those with respiratory diseases. That's why the smog from the fine particle matter blowing in from China, acid snow and rain are becoming more polluted. With the winter, China burns much more coal and there is an expected increase in the amount of elements that causes acid snow. Therefore, we can expect to see worsened conditions with acid snow all this winter. This winter, as the strong cold spell continues, frequent snowstorms in regional areas are expected, so much caution is required. As the snow is more dangerous than acid rain, it's important to reduce contact by using an umbrella and mask in order to stay healthy. Still ahead, glaucoma is a silent illness that invades your eyes over a long period of time. With an increase in lifestyle diseases such as diabetes and extreme nearsightedness, more young people are suffering from it as well. We take a look at how to prevent glaucoma. And a good Tuesday morning to you all as we kick things off with figure skating. Now, after dominating the Golden Spin of Zagreb a few weekends ago, Kim Yana has decided on which event to participate in before heading over to Sochi. Now, on Monday, the 2010 Olympic gold medalist announced that she will prepare for the 2014 Sochi Games by competing at the National Sports Championships, which is set to take place from January 3rd to the 5th. Even with the four continents figure skating championships being held at the end of January, Kim felt that it's too close to the Sochi Games and will instead stick with the domestic event to prepare for the Winter Olympics. Meanwhile, it will be her last competitive event here in the nation before her retirement. And now we move on to Marine boy Pak Tae-hwan, who competed in the Queensland Swimming Championships. And with the event being his last competition of the season, he was able to finish first in the men's 200-meter event. The 24-year-old was off to a great start, finishing the first 50-meter of the event in 25.43 seconds before finishing the event at 1 minute 47.92 seconds, winning his first gold medal in the 200-meter event. Meanwhile, Pak Tae-hwan plans to compete in several events before the upcoming 2014 Asian Games in Incheon. And moving on with the year 2013 coming to an end real soon, Gallup Korea, the top research firm in Korea, revealed the brightest athlete of 2013. And after asking 1,702 people in Korea ages 13 and up, Ryan Jin of the LA Dodgers received 51.4% of the vote and came in first place. Meanwhile, Kim Yona came in second with 35.2% of the vote and brightest star, brightest athlete of 2012, Son Yun Jae came in third place this year after receiving 24.9% of the vote. And now finishing things off in Europe with the UEFA Champions League round of 16 drawing out yesterday, Son Heung Min and Bayer Leverkusen will be facing off with the French powerhouse Paris Saint-Germain. With the nation's eye on Son Heung Min and his success with the German side, the round of 16 will be a tough one as they're set to face off with PSG who are currently in first place in Ligue 1. 
The French side boasts some of the top players in the world, including Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who is considered one of the top strikers in the world. Now, the round of 16 of the UEFA Champions League will not start until February of next year. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. According to the National Health Insurance Service, the number of patients suffering from glaucoma has jumped by 61% in the past six years. And joining us is Dr. Dewey Key from the INUI Clinic to talk more about glaucoma. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. doctor. The glaucoma is one of the most uh, common cause for the blindness, along with the diabetic retinopathy and cataract and the macular disorders. Mm -hmm. The most patients do not have any symptoms until it gets very advanced stages, so we have to see it very quickly. And the, the, the in very, they have the very hard time for the treatment when mm -hmm. you find out very late. So mm -hmm. we have to be very aware of the, the disease itself and the preventative way to cure and the, the block the, the glaucoma from your eyes. Okay. Okay. Although this is a detrimental mm -hmm. disease, at the same time, it mm -hmm. can be prevented. So mm -hmm. we'll take a look at some of the preventative options. Sixty-two-year-old Kim Yong-soo, while receiving a medical checkup in 2011, discovered he had glaucoma. I received the medical checkup, and they told me to go to a specialist, saying that I have glaucoma. So that was a big surprise. Glaucoma usually occurs when pressure in the eyes increases and pushes down on the optic nerve or blocks proper blood circulation, causing irregularities. There's a fluid in the eye that provides nutrition, but if there's too much of it or if there are issues in the drainage, the fluid cannot leave the eye and the pressure goes up. If you compare octograms, the image of an average eye shows a round orange optic nerve in the center. But an advanced glaucoma patient's image comes up white due to the damage in the optic nerve. Glaucoma causes damage to your optic nerve, which leads to the narrowing of vision. If it goes untreated, it can lead to the loss of sight. The number of those with glaucoma was at roughly 580,000 last year, and this is a 61% increase over the past six years. Glaucoma is more commonly known to be found in people in their 50s and older, but there is an increasing number in those in their 30s. These days, a lot of young people receive corrective vision surgery, and in the process of doing checkups, we conduct glaucoma tests. While doing so, we've seen an increased rate in early detection glaucoma patients within young people. For the younger generation, with an increase in lifestyle diseases such as diabetes and hypertension, as well as extreme myopia patients, there is a greater need for caution against glaucoma. Kang Soo-in had extreme nearsightedness and during a regular eye exam was diagnosed with glaucoma. I always thought glaucoma would be for older people. I didn't feel any symptoms, but now I'm told I have it. It's not even something that gets better on its own, so I don't know what to do. Glaucoma can be treated using eye drops to reduce pressure in the eyes or laser treatment and surgery. You don't feel the symptoms of glaucoma, and once you do start feeling them, it's hard to treat it. That's why those who are more susceptible to it should receive a detailed checkup for it. Early diagnosis is the only way to prevent this condition. It can be tested through eye pressure tests, eye exams, and a variety of other methods. Glaucoma slowly progresses without you really knowing, so it's important to receive regular eye exams to keep your vision healthy for the coming years. Well, it seems that uh, eye pressure or intraocular pressure mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. leading factor when it comes mm -hmm. to glaucoma. Mm -hmm. So if you have normal eye pressure, mm -hmm. does that mean you're safe from glaucoma? No. The Asians, especially Koreans and Japanese, are more susceptible to the in normal intraocular pressure because uh, Koreans, especially, 
have the little bit frazzle or the weak optic nerve in the fibers mm -hmm. with, uh, compared to the uh, Caucasian, the Europeans. So we have to be very cautious about the intraocular pressure. Even with the normal uh, range of intraocular pressure, your optic nerve can be damaged uh -huh. by the normal range. So you have to be very aware of your optic nerve and you have to uh, get the regular checkup whether your optic nerve is healthy or not. Mm. Is glaucoma genetic? If my parents have it, then I'm mm -hmm. more likely to have uh, it? This disease is called, uh, uh, thought to be a family history rather than a genetic traits. If your parents are having, are suffering from the glaucoma, then you being a, a patient will be up to two to three times more. Mm -hmm. If a siblings, uh, it increases more up mm -hmm. to five to seven times more. Uh -huh. uh, and the, if you are having the myopia, the nearsighted, mm -hmm. and you're having the, any uh, uh, systemic disease such as uh, vasospasms, vasoconstrictions, such as Raynaud's, uh, other the systemic disease, then you will be more uh, aware of the okay. disease. Mm. This is something else, but cataracts mm -hmm. could also become an issue for the mm -hmm. elderly. Now, mm -hmm. how are these two different? The cataract and glaucoma are both can make your eyes uh, uh, go blind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the characteristic is somewhat different. The cataract is a matter of a crystalline lens inside of your eye globe, uh -huh. so it gets a little bit, little bit more haze when you get aged. It makes your eyesight more, little bit blurry. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a matter of the aging process rather than a disease. But the glaucoma is a matter of the optic nerve get damaged by the, your intraocular pressure. So mm -hmm. it is a progressive disease, and it is. Uh, uh, categorized by a disease, okay. so we have to differentiate. So cataracts would be a condition mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, glaucoma is a yeah, disease. Right, right. Mm. I mean, this is a good wake-up call for me as well as for all of us. I mean, you do get dental checkups, mm -hmm, you do mm -hmm. get health checkups, but then you don't really think about getting your eyes checked mm -hmm, regularly. Mm -hmm. But do you have any recommendations on food maybe that will help prevent uh, the, the condition from developing? Obviously, there's something that we hate normally huh. with health. Carrots. So yeah, vegetables. vegetables. <laughs> we have fruits. all these vegetables. <laughs> yeah, so the these uh, the uh, kiwi and blueberries oh, kiwi, contains good. very high concentration of the the antioxidants such mm -hmm. as vitamin C, E, A, and lutein. So hmm. uh, if you are, are are eager to have the uh, the healthy food, then take those uh, food and uh, the. Okay. It's interesting how you skipped broccoli and you went straight to kiwi right. <laughs> and blueberries. He's trying to trick us. So, I mean, well, okay, so basically judging from what we've all talked about, it seems mm -hmm. that regular checkups and medical mm -hmm. checkups and also eating the right foods mm -hmm. will help. So just mm -hmm. wrap it up for us, Dr. Dew. Um, what, what is the best way to make sure that our eyes stay healthy and free from glaucoma? Okay, because the, the most risk factors are beyond your control, the getting the regular eye checkup is very essential for mm -hmm. the glaucoma checkups. And getting the health of food and minerals would be very helpful for your eyes for protecting from the, uh, the glaucoma. Mm -hmm. And if you are already having the glaucoma, then control your intraocular pressure properly by the using the, in, uh, the eye drops mm -hmm. prescribed by your doctors. The, do not have the tight ties. Uh -huh. Do not handle the heavy weights whenever you are doing the activities because those things would make your intraocular pressure right. spike uh -huh. and unstable. And last thing, the UV and sunlight will damage your optic nerve and oh. other uh, components of your eyes. So bring the sunglasses whenever you go outside hmm. to protect your eyes from the sunlights hmm. and the UVs. All right. Okay. Okay. So well, the eyesight good. is something that we all take for granted as long right. as you can see straight. And it's the kind that creeps up on you. Yes. So you, early detection is key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Liu, for joining us. Thank you. Okay. And would you like some water, please, uh, <laughs> as we wrap up the show? Okay, that's all we have prepared for you on this have a wonderful Tuesday, Tuesday morning. I went a little blank there. That's right. It's hard to count the days when you're doing the show every day. We'll see you back here on Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.